So listening to the Winklevosses explain how they have a bunch of Bitcoin that they supposedly bought at one and uh, it's over 300 actually and uh, past that in most most of the time. Um, they are sounding like uh, thought I'd take on what Bitcoin is and identify you know how, what's going on with this weird currency and uh, in my disc, my research on it, I found this ATM that is called RoboCoin, and the uh, it's an ATM that sits there and can take buy, sell, or redeem bitcoins. And um, so they literally have set up a little ATM that you can put money into or get money out of if you have Bitcoin um, that's digitally stored on their accounts with you. So what is Bitcoin? It's Bitcoin is really just best described as a virtual unanimous currency and uh, it allows for it's really just a credit system much like you would have a disney buck or a uh, mickey mouse dollar or um, uh, something that only has value in one particular venue and in this case it's a digital venue and it's only with for, with people who are willing to accept it. And there are, there are big retailers out there, not many of them, but like uh, overstock.com that supposedly takes um, Bitcoin, although I haven't used it myself. But I thought it was interesting to see how Bitcoin has, has been as a currency over time, at least considered by the servers that run Bitcoin. And here's a um, diagram of the value of Bitcoin over time. And nobody knows when it started. Uh, it's an algorithm that's an open source algorithm and when any server can run it uh, and so also the own the person who invented it is unknown as well um, but we know it's been discussed in conferences as early as 2009 and servers have been on and really it just bitcoin started to have uh, no value at all it's just something that the servers had then people started to figure out that because it has a limited amount there's only 21 million bitcoin in currency that they started to trade it and so as you can see here they were kind of yielding towards uh, some people have said a dollar was like they were trying to go for a dollar a bitcoin and realize that bitcoin goes to six decimals unlike the us dollar which only goes to two decimal places a bitcoin goes to six decimal places and so you could actually have one one millionth of a bitcoin and that's the smallest amount it's like a penny but um and what happened interesting is that really quick and actually let me turn over to a uh, different chart where you can see the the uh, volume traded uh, uh, at the same time that is an overlay i think that's here and uh, so the volume traded of bitcoin was really uh, quite small as you can you'd probably imagine but as soon as enough people got in there was actually millions of bitcoin traded and it went up to like $20. So imagine you had just your server sitting there and all of a sudden you, it's selling and became ma majorly valuable. And maybe this is where the Winklevosses think that they got in at, or maybe they found someone that, uh, <laughs> like a Zuckerberg, uh, that got in on Bitcoin at an earlier stage. Uh, but you can imagine the, the elation of these guys being able to sell, potentially sell, you know, some Bitcoin at at $32. So this thing went extreme and then went tumbling right back down, but didn't didn't come down as far as that dollar level. It got close to that, but it hit a support basin. So people sold and bought at the same time and it's just kind of gone in a couple waves since then. So, you know, the people who well, thought that was 30 was crazy. Well, here they are. They're getting back in, they're buying in and then a huge amass and this is probably the first time it hit major media. Um is then it hit hundreds of dollars and then it had a rebound effect um, later the next year and then it's had a ricochet and the funny thing i found is that this this last trend here um, this is after like the major effect so after 2014 people have heard of it but they really don't have a huge new surge it's predicted that there will be but it's going to become a whole new audience that has to enter in order to make that happen big business um, but at this point the trending is really similar to something else that we consider as a virtual currency and that's uh, the uh, gold exchange rate so if you look at historical gold rate um, in just this last year uh, one year trend you can actually see uh, you can see that 
the US dollar to gold price has this kind of up down but general downward trend over the last uh, calendar year which uh, that's what many people will say and actually I think it's believable to the fact that this currency is much like um, or it could be considered like gold like at least in terms of its indexing um, I would say on a per Bitcoin basis um, it doesn't make sense that it would be over value the value of gold since gold is a physical uh, uh, and limited commodity uh, as compared to Bitcoin which is not physical so and uh, uh, but you know the fact that there's only 21 million Bitcoin and the fact that each one would be worth a gold bar or two gold bars is pretty irrelevant but nevertheless it's it's this unanimous currency that can be exchanged and and rather than looking at the price you know on a daily basis and how it changes really what this has done is is allowed for a way that two people can um, exchange um, in a uh, unanimous understanding that Bitcoin is for a particular service product um, whatever and um, they may take into consideration what the value that they believe they can exchange the Bitcoin for uh, based upon today's rates. So it's a daily currency. You really don't want to buy and hold it unless you have a reason to continue to provide buy things that you think that have a more steady rate in Bitcoin. But uh, uh, chances are that wherever your locality is, uh, Bitcoin is going to be more specific to that. And that's why people think of this as a global currency, because there is no locality for Bitcoin. Uh, the you know pesos are only relevant in a certain region of uh, South America, uh, not globally, and so you have things like um, Bitcoin, which is pr pr what many people consider a global uh, unanimous currency, and it's not trackable except by the people who are involved with the transaction. That's the servers. Uh, as well as uh, the two people involved who may be on different servers or the same servers. So, uh, and uh, your relationship uh, with that though, it's interesting to see how this funny company uh, did their uh, ATM. They required a, f a cell phone number So you have to um, give it your cell phone number. Obviously, you have to use the cell phone then, um, scanning and palm print. Uh, that's their requirements. And but you know, on its core level, uh, you don't even need to be a person, I suppose, to exchange in Bitcoin. Uh, you can make programs and applications that have their own identity. In fact, that's part of the challenge, though, is if a um, an account is lost, a server crashes. Uh, that has data on it that stores Bitcoin information, it is non-recoverable. Um, uh, you can't seek to the FDIC or anyone else. And that's uh, uh, one of the drawbacks of this currency is that uh, it is it is uh, destroyable if you've uh, lost your Bitcoin, essentially, or the server casually disappears. So um, it is definitely one which you are... Uh, relying upon the person or the server that you're dealing with in terms of its it knows your relationship with it um, if you gave it an id it knows you but if you are simply a password then uh, you know it, it you can maintain that degree of of anonymity uh, and the other person doesn't need to know you except by the bitcoin and unique identifier and, and uh, qr code that you provide in fact that's one of the nice things is that uh, you can provide as a uh, payment method to people just a printout of your uh, QR code and they scan it in and actually can receive payment or you can send payment with that. So it's really neat that you just with a unique identifier can uh, exchange and you don't need, like I said, any identification, any um, legal tender, there's no history um, that, um, that unless you keep it and uh, uh, you know so great deal of of anonymity if you want a transaction that um, it doesn't require you any sort of recourse or no chance of it uh, charging back um, this is the way so very interested to see how these models develop and who decides to use uh, bitcoin for what reason unlike the 
Winklevosses who predict that uh, um, if they're right that uh, uh, Bitcoin will become a major, you know, uh, global scale transactional force. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I do see that it has a place much like uh, uh, Craigslist does in our society.